Okay, hello and welcome to this Bucket plugin development tutorial series. Um, in this series we're going to be looking at commands and um, basically ev everything to do with commands. So these are, well they're going to be chat commands in this case, so you can only use them in game. Um, and the reason for that I will explain as we get to the appropriate point. Um, and we're going to be demonstrating this using, well, by creating a very simple plugin, um, which is going to be a super pickaxe plugin. So the idea is that uh, a player in game will be able to enable the super pickaxe mode with like a chat command um, and then while it's enabled they'll be able to break blocks instantly and get the drops from them um, and you know when it's disabled it'll just the you know breaking blocks will behave as normal. Um, so what we're going to do is first create the sort of functionality for the super pickaxe plugin and then we're going to go ahead and add the commands to enable and disable it. Um, so, like, like we have here, we've just got a completely empty Eclipse window. Um, so we're just going to start completely from scratch and go ahead and create a new project. So we just right-click in this little folder area here, go to New, Java Project, and then this is too big, so I'll just make that smaller. And then we need to give our plugin a name. So I'm just going to call this um, Super Pick, and we can ignore pretty much everything else and just click Finish. So now you see we have this folder created. Um, so the next thing we need to do is create a package to contain all of our source files. And we do that inside this source folder here. So just right click on this, go to new, which is at the very top, and then package, which is just a few down. And then we need to give the package a name. Um, and the standard convention for this is you take a domain name that you own, ideally where you host the code, I guess, and reverse it. So I own this. So I'm just going to reverse that around and use bucket, like so. And then after that, you just add the name of the package, which in this case is super pick, like so. So then we just hit finish and we get this package created. So all of our source files will be contained in here. So let's just go ahead and create the main class file for the plugin. So just right click on this package, go to new, and then class, which you can just see here, hopefully. Um, so we just need to, all we need to do is give this class a name, and we're just going to give it the name of superpick, which is the same as our project's name, and then just click finish. And you can see that we get this class created, and it sort of sets up the sort of standard, you know, this starting point code for us. Um, so this uh, class, as with the TNT plugin, needs to extend the Java plugin class and this just makes all of sort of buckets methods available to us so we can like register events um, oh ob sorry obviously um, something I did forget to mention is that you need to include the bucket library or the bucket.jar file um, now again I will put a link to the download in the description uh, of this video um, so uh, I'm just going to be you know, using the one I've already downloaded but you need to download this and sort of put it somewhere um, so what you need to do is right click on your project here, go to properties, and then you get this window here. Then you need to click on Java build path, which is this one. And then you need to just go to the libraries tab, because I think the default is source. So you go to the libraries tab, and then add external jars. Um, there is an option to do this when you're creating the project. I just forgot, so there you go. I'm just showing you another way to do it in case you forget, so you don't have to delete your whole project and start again. Um, so I've just got the um, bucket.jar file in my dev folder, sorry, shares, wait, where is it, dev bucket, there it is. So this is the file, and I will put a link to the download in the description. So just double click that, and then see it's been added, just click OK, and now we should be able to import our yeah, um, Java plugin class. So we just click import there, and that red warning goes away. So the next thing we need to do is add our on enable and on disable um, methods. So I'm just going to create a new method now. It's going to be public. It's going to be a type void because it does it well. It returns nothing, and its name is going to be on enable. It's not going to take any parameters. And, and then I'm going to go ahead and create another one, the same type and visibility, and this is going to be called on disable. So like I said before, these are basically just called um, when the plugin is initialized and when it is uninitialized, I guess. 
Um, so this is when the server starts up and when it shuts down. Um, so on enable is where we're going to be registering all, registering all our events and on disable we're just going to log a message telling people that it has been disabled. So I'm going to go ahead now again and create a method to um, log messages which is something I did in the previous two videos or two, uh, two plugins. So we're going to call this um, well it's going to be um, public its type is going to be void and its name is going to be log message. We're going to have this take one parameter which is going to be of type string and its name is just going to be msg, short for message obviously. Um, and then again I won't explain this in too much detail but um, what we need to do is log um, a message to the console and to do that we need to define a logger and we're going to make this logger um, a property of our main class so that we don't have to keep getting new ones basically. Um, so just up here I'm going to define a new private property and it's going to be of type logger and its name is going to be log this is going to be equal to logger get logger minecraft as the string so id for the logger and this just provides an interface to the log file so now in here we can use this to log messages so say we wanted to just log the message that we pass in we would just do this log info and then we just pass in the message like so but we don't want to just log that because it's a bit pointless we could just call this in here um, we want to sort of format this a little bit nicer and we want to put the name of our plugin and the version before it um, and this sort of brings us on to the next thing which is the plugin.yml file which you need to create um, and that just tells the bucket server sort of information about your plugin um, so it allows it to load it basically so this just needs to go in the source folder and not in the package so just right click on the source folder go to new and then file which is here and we just need to give this file a name which is plugin.yml um, and this file needs to define at least three properties first one is the name of the plugin um, in this case this is super pick the second one is the version which in this case will be 0.1 and the final one and arguably most important is the main and this is sort of the um, main class it tells the server the sort of you know how to load it how to load this class file because um, obviously just by default the server doesn't know that we've called our um, class file the same name as the name of the plugin um, so we need to actually you know, tell it that so what we do here is use the path to the uh, class file which in this case is the package name so um, like this and that's the package name and then after that we need to just append the name of the class which is that so now when we start up our server we shouldn't see any errors and this plugin should be loaded after we've exported it obviously um, but I won't test this now, I'm just going to go ahead and finish off this logging method so what we need to do is get this information so we can get the name of the plugin and the version from this file and use it in our sort of message string so we do that using the plugin description file which just represents the plugin.yml file um, and that's just the type of the variable we're creating and the name of this variable is going to be pd file and it's going to be equal to this get description which is here like so um, and this is just provided by the uh, Java plugins uh, class so this is why we extend it if we didn't extend this we wouldn't be able to access this get description method and this just needs importing most likely yep so just import that and then we can use this to add some information to our message string so we can use pd file get name which is the name of the plugin and we can add on a, um, a space like so and we can add on the version number which is get version and then we can add on a space or one of those in a space actually one of those a colon um, and just interestingly as well I'll just point out that if you do just pd file and then a dot 
um, it shows you a list of all the properties that you could actually use in your plugin.yml file. Um, so you can see that, for example, you could add um, commands, which we'll get to later, um, main, which is the main class, permissions, all sort of stuff. Website, because that's you can add a website property. Um, so yeah, there's sort of all, all kinds of information that you can add, and it's not all necessary. Anyway, so what we're going to do next is just have a message logged on enable. So we just do this log message, and we'll just have the message as enabled. Then we'll do the same. Oops. We'll do the same on disable. So we can just do this log message. Obviously not the same message. We'll just say disable or disabled. Yep. Dio diabled. Dis what? There we go. Um, and there we go. So now if we export this, we'll just go to File, Export. And we do want to export it as a jar file. So just click Next. And we want to export our, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, this plugin. And we don't want these two files. And we don't want to save it as TND Notifier. We want to save it as superpick.jar. Just click Next. We can save the description of this jar in the workspace, which will just save us having to go through all these steps every time. And we're going to save this as um, super pick and super pick, like so. And then we just click Finish. And you can see that we have this created. So the next time we want to export, export, export this, we can just double click this, and we'll get this window with all the settings saved see that these files aren't checked and we can just click finish and it will export it. So now if we just come across to our plugins folder you can see that the superpick.jar file has been created and if we just go across to the terminal and start up the server we should see hopefully that uh, I haven't made any typos and the superpick plugin will be loaded and you can see there that it has um, here superpick 0.1 enabled and if we just type stop to stop the server you can see that superpick 0.1 is disabled. Okay, so that is essentially the basics of the project setup. Um, so what we need to go ahead and do now is uh, register the events for, um, you know, uh, actually enabling the super pickaxe sort of functionality. Um, I'm actually going to end this here because the next part will take quite a while, and I'm trying to keep my videos uh, under the 15-minute mark. Um, so thank you for watching and come back for part two where we will cover um, the, um, well, like I just said, setting up the actual super pickaxe functionality.